Hey there, everybody. Today, we're going to learn all about brushes in Adobe Photoshop. So to get started, we're going to go to our brush panel. You can find the brush panel by hitting B for brush on your keyboard. Once you're at the little brush tool, you can hold down your left mouse button and explore all the different sub tools that are found within this brush tool panel. So when we access the brush tool, we're given our options bar. And in our options bar, we have a lot of helpful tool sets to play with. We have an expanded brush panel, which can play with things like direction, size, and hardness. It also allows you to navigate the different brushes that you find in your Adobe Photoshop. This can be accessed as well to the right hand side in the brushes menu, as you can see, and you can zoom in and out to explore any of these brushes that you see fit. Another really helpful tool is the brush settings panel. So any particular brush you use, you can play with things like the spacing of the brush, the way it's flipped, the angle of the brush. You can even go through and create custom brushes within this panel for you to navigate. So knowing where those are are really important. If you do not see these two panels, you can always go to Window Workspace and reset your panel to Essential, and then make sure you go to Brushes. And as soon as you go to Brushes under Window Brushes, these two panels are going to pop up for you and kind of dock themselves in the right-hand side. So we're going to create a simple document here by going to New, and we're going to create a 1080 by 1080 pixel, just a square play canvas. I want you to play around when you're kind of working here. And before we lay any color down, we're going to reset our color panel by hitting the D key. You can also hit this little black and white swatch key here. We have our foreground color and our background color. If you hit X, you can swap between the two. And by default, this is my brush size. You're maybe a different size. I'm gonna just simply draw a stroke. And you're gonna see when I draw my stroke, I have a single brush line. Now, things you're going to want to do with your brush. You're not gonna always wanna paint in these giant kind of strokes. So you may want to change your brush size. You can see we have the ability to change that brush size here in the panel or up here in the panel as we see fit. Another way to do this is hit the bracket keys, which are the keys located to the right of your P key on your keyboard. By tapping the left bracket, you get a smaller brush. By tapping the right bracket, you get a bigger brush. That is a really good way to do it. My other favorite way is hold down your Alt key or your Option key, and then the right mouse button at the same time. So again, that is hold down the Alt key and your right mouse button, hold both down, and if you drag up and down, you're gonna actually change the softness of your brush, but if you drag left and right, check that out. You're going to change the actual scale of your brush. So again, Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, right mouse button, left and right will change the diameter of your brush, up and down will change the softness, and that will allow you to kind of navigate different brush strokes. And again, we can create big strokes, small strokes, you name it, rather quickly within our scene. So really, really useful tips as we go. Now, if I'm ever coloring or doing any digital painting, I usually create a, uh, a palette or a swatches layer here. And in my swatches layer, I go ahead and I select the colors I'm going to use. So if I go up here and put, for instance, some red, uh, I may choose a different color. So I may go down here and choose blue. I'm gonna just create a little palette, so to speak, kind of like I'm Bob Ross, uh, and I'm gonna use this to paint. Now, I, I can keep going back and forth here as I select these, but another easy way with a pretty big hotkey is to hold Control, Alt, Shift, and right mouse button. Again, if you're on a Mac, that's Control or Command, so that's Command, Option, Shift, or Control, Alt, Shift. And then if you hold those keys with your right mouse button, you can navigate to very specific colors. Here, we'll grab maybe an orange-esque color here, maybe yellowish, and you can create your color panel. Why is this important? So when you start drawing here, all I have to do is tap my Alt key, select a color, and check this out. I can just quickly navigate through these colors as I see fit. I can even add a new layer and I can still select those colors from the other layer by just holding the Alt key, and that gives me my little eyedropper tool. 
and I can start painting away till I see fit. This is a really great method of creation. So having that little swatch palette can be super, super helpful. The next thing is you may not want to draw things exactly fully uh, opaque as you draw. You may want to have some opacity to them. So if I hold my Alt key and that right mouse button and I maybe soften my brush to make it a super soft brush, I would change my opacity here at the top of the screen by just shifting. And that gives me, again, a softer view of that brush. Um, I can start layering here. I can turn on things like my airbrush. So if you're an airbrush user, you can see it's just building the color. Uh, I love the little airbrush tool. Let me hit Control Z here. Maybe we're painting clouds there. Um, but again, this can be a little troublesome for a person using a brush. So I have a little shortcut for you. There's a ton of shortcuts in this video, but the number keys, one, uh, if you go ahead and are, are dealing with your brush, one will create uh, 10%, uh, 10 will create, um, all right, so if I'm painting and I wanna change my opacity, it's actually rather easy to do. Um, what I can do is I can actually use a little bit of my number keys. So for instance, if I hit zero on my number key, it's going to be 100%. If I hit five on my number key, that opacity changes to 50%. Now I will tell you, if you have your airbrush setting on, this will not work because airbrush is based off of a different pressure sensitivity. But if I hit one, I now have 10%. So again, zero is 100 one is 10% and all the numbers in between are helpful for you to kind of continue to paint. You can also then use the option key on some of these. And if you're painting with 20% or so, you can start blending your colors in almost like, again, you're painting with oil paints or whatnot. It's a really helpful tool. If you wanna change the flow, you would just simply hold shift and hit those numbers. The flow is just how much basically paint comes out of your brush. So you can see it's just shooting out less paint. Um, again, that shift and the number keys as well. So learning these hotkeys is imperative for you to create your own custom paint style. Now you can use a Wacom tablet, you can use your, uh, your mouse. If you have a fancy tablet like a Wacom or a Huon, you can go ahead and set things like pressure sensitivity, so again, if I hit pressure sensitivity, that's going to change. You can see my brush now tapers a little bit. Um, I have all sorts of options here. I have, uh, again, a symmetry tool if I wanna paint uh, symmetrically. So again, I can set that up and use that. I don't use that one uh, very often, but you can see it's, you know, you wanna paint symmetrically, there it is. Uh, all sorts of fun stuff. And we even have smoothing of a brush, which is really helpful as well. So if you're a little afraid, that your brush strokes are not the best and you want to kind of smooth them. This you know, causes a little lag in your scene, but uh, it will kind of smooth those out for you. Great, so now that we've discussed the basic and the hotkeys of brushes, how do you add a brush into this file? Well, Adobe brushes are really easy to download for free on anywhere in the internet. So we're going to go ahead and download a brush and we're going to use what's called an ABR file, Adobe brush file. So to do this, I'm going to go to my brush settings here at the top of my options bar and I'm going to hit this little gear and we're going to do import brushes. I believe there's probably a way somewhere in here that you can do that as well. But for our sake, we're going to do import brushes and we're going to navigate to our folder three here and select spring brushes. These are from Kyle Webster. If you Google Kyle Webster free brushes, he has thousands of brushes that you can do. And as soon as we click on those, we can navigate down to the spring brushes and let's see what Kyle has created. So Kyle has created a lot of great texture brushes. Notice every time I push down on my mouse and I click here that it rotates, that's pretty fun. Um, we have a leaf brush, that's really cool. So maybe we can layer some leaves. Oh, gosh, his brushes are so, so great. There's uh, kind of an ink brush. So, you know, if you wanna draw and do some fun stuff like that, you can. These will download to your Photoshop file 
and they will actually stay within your brushes panel depending on the computer. Now they will not come with you to a different um, computer. So just know that they're kind of stuck on this computer. If you wanna download them on another computer, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you download them and bring that ABR file with you. But overall, this is how you install a pre-built brush, which is pretty cool. And making brushes is just as easy. So one of my favorite brushes to make is I'm going to go ahead and open a, um, let's do another new document. And I usually do this in squares. And I'm going to kind of import an image into this document. So you can make a brush really out of anything. So I'm going to go up here to file and we're going to do place embedded. And I'm going to go to my scene and we're going to go to this stock image, this PNG of a cloud. So I want to make a brush based on this cloud. So I have this beautiful image. I've deleted the background because I don't want the white box around it. Uh, and to make a brush, my goodness, this is so easy. We're going to go um, over to our edit, define, uh, define brush here. So we're going to go into our edit, define brush preset. It's going to ask us to name the brush. It's going to pull in the grayscales of this. So we're going to call this cloud. I use this brush all the time, but let's go ahead and make a new layer and hide this. Check this out. Now it's going to pick up those colors. We do black. This is a great way to simulate fog, especially if you're doing like a movie poster and you want to kind of go in. And as we continue to edit this, we could go to those brush settings and play with some of those kind of different Tools. So things like shape dynamics, how it jitters, right? So when we put it in, how does that look? We could play with things like, um, again, the scattering of the brush, which is really cool. Um, we could play with the different brush tip settings, which is fun. Um, so really go through and explore these different areas. And this will really help you kind of determine what Kind of brush is right for you. So again, expanding this and just looking at different pen controls. If you're using a tablet, if you want to add, you know, different textures to this, again, play with the different scatters. Uh, gosh, the, the possibilities really are endless here. Um, we can go through each one and really just, you know, go to town and explore these specific areas. So we could rotate this again if we wanted to really, really fun to do. Go to that brush tip. And then if we want to rotate a little bit upward and make our clouds a little upward, we totally could do that. So again, that's edit, define brush. It's so easy to do. Um, you can create all sorts of custom brushes to your liking. So with that said, that's just the basic overview of brushes. Go ahead and explore. Look at what brushes you can find. Download the uh, Kyle's brushes that I provided and uh, really see what you can create on those brushes and really just, you know, have some fun, uh, you know, creating and exploring with these different patterns. Looking forward to seeing what you all create and I'll catch you in the next video.